chapter 4, verse 1. Open in prayer. Lord, just uh, thank you for this time and this place, Lord. <coughs> Let the Holy Spirit be floating around here, Lord, and just fill our hearts with the joy of you, Lord. Find the devil from being here today. Etch your words on our hearts as we walk today, Lord, that we can share your word with people. Lift us up, guide us, and protect us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Okay. Verse 1. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourself the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So as to live for the rest of time in the flesh, no longer for human passion, but for the will of God. For the time that passed, suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensual passion, drunkenness, orgies, drinking, parties, and lawless idolatry. Spike Greek, welcome <laughs> to Laconia. <laughs> With respect to that, this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery. And they malign you. But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead. That through judged in the, or though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded. For the sake of your prayers, above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love, co love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has a gift, has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him be long and glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Man, what a loaded thing. Right? What loaded words we have to follow if we choose to follow him, all right? In Psalm 116, verse 1, it says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. In verse 2, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. Beautiful. Do I follow that? Do I walk in a simple song that we listen to it? Right? Amazing grace. What a song. Do you walk in that? Are your chains gone? Have you been set free? Are you ready to suffer in the flesh? <laughs> right? Are you ready to suffer in the flesh? The same way Christ suffered, even to death, right? Would you be willing to die because of his name? Right? He died for us. Would we be willing to die for him? Are you armed with the Word of God? When the attack comes on, can you send the Word of God into somebody to say, look it, we can change. You don't have to live that way. You have the opportunity to help someone out. Do you choose to use that? Walk in a Christian life where death is a gift to the end of sin. Right? I know when I die, all this is gone. I don't have rust. I don't have things deteriorating on me. My body's not going to be sore anymore. I can't <coughs> wait. But it will be in God's time. Right? So I get to live in the luxury that this is going to end with. Others just don't even know. They praise a tree. What if someone cut it down? <laughs> they have nothing to fall on. 
right? We have heaven. We have eternal peace, eternal life. Do we offer that to our friends and family and the people that are outside? Are they walking by in misery and you could just say, hey, come here. Come here for a minute. Do we walk in the flesh or do we walk in Christ? Right? Man, it's real easy to fall into the flesh out here this week. Real easy. You know, I, I, I talk about it. I've been looking at a motorcycle that I do not need, but I want. I had no need of it. I sat out here watching all these motorcycles go by yesterday, and I'm looking at my bike and what a nice bike I have. But it's not good enough. I want more. I want something better. I want something bigger. I want something faster. And then I'll have more tickets, and I'll have more responsibility and going to court, all the things that will come along with it. And then I'll be riding like stupid and his brother out here. I'll just fall right into place with it. Because the flesh wants that. I love that. I desire that. But I don't need that. That's not going to help me in life. That didn't help me before. It's certainly not going to help me any better now. Is the world in shock that you don't swear anymore? Is the world in shock that you don't go drinking? Do you not go drinking and drugging because of a program? Or do you not go drinking and drugging because God says you really shouldn't be a drunkard? Even though I have a disease of diabetes, do I not eat a lemon meringue pie because it's there? Because the doctor says I shouldn't eat the lemon meringue pie. Or do I not eat the whole pie because God says don't be a glutton? Which do I do these things for? Because of what the world tells me to do or what God asks me to do? Right? He doesn't tell me what to do. He asks me. We had a man and a woman pull up to us last night, just asking us. We had a couple that pulled up. Where's the beach? Where's the beach? Right? So this guy and this woman pull up on their motorcycle, and they're like, where's the beach? And we told them where the beach was, and this man and woman got off. They had a cigarette. They grasped it. And I'm sitting there going, I don't want them. I just don't want them. I know why they stopped right here. God had them stop right here, and I just didn't feel like doing it. I did not feel like going over and praying with them. So I sat there, and I sat there, and I sat there. And finally I said, nah, I gotta go. And I go over. And they're back on the bike, and they're getting ready, and the guy's ready to hit the button on the ignition. And I'm like, you know, God forbid, if something bad happened to you today, where would you go? And the woman says, well, I'd go to heaven. I said, how do you get there? The guy says, you get out of the end, it next to the lights, you take a left. <laughs> that's what I told him for directions to the beach. Right? To him, that's how he gets to heaven. That's a perfect response of the flesh. How's he going to get to heaven? He's going to make it to his beach. Wow. The woman says, Jesus. He's like, wow. He's, he's almost nudging me to get away. And I'm like, okay, have a good trip. And if you don't drink a drug, come on back and you can come in and hang out here because that's what we do here. We have a safe place for people that aren't using. And then they wave. Then they're waving as they pull away. But what an opportunity God placed these two in my path to be able to go share. Then there was at least two others, if not three others, that would, hey, where's the beach? They're pulling over and asking gospel with everyone. And I didn't. I just chose not to. I just, I didn't feel like it. I was in the motor. I didn't feel like it. I was being me. Because I wanted to be out riding around with the bikes. I wanted to be with the flesh. I wanted to go to heaven down Wales Beach for a while. Of course, I knew I'd end up in hell before I even got to the beach. <laughs> but that's what my flesh wants. I want that. How do I walk in Christ? And not walk in that flesh. Not see these motorcycles in one of them. Either. I wanted to go riding with 50 bikes so bad yesterday just to be in that pack and go for the ride. But me and Mark, we ended up, we, we did the tank. It was beautiful. I haven't gone for a ride like that in I don't know how long. What an awesome day. We got challenged along the way. 
it started getting dark and miserable and we're like, I don't know if I want to get stuck on the tank and pour in cold rain. But well, let's go. Let's go. We went. The sky opened up. It was sunny and beautiful. We had an awesome ride. Right? It was fantastic. Two Christian guys riding around the mountains. Right? Uh, you can't ask for anything better. Right? We stopped at a restaurant and we looked and there was guys across the street from CMA. And they popped, they were right at a gas station. They have a little tent set up at the gas station. And every time motorcycles roll in, they walk over and see if they'll pray. And when we were watching them, there was like probably 15 bikes. And we're looking, the next thing we know, they were all in a circle praying. Right? What did you do yesterday? Did you offer the gospel to someone? Was there anybody you could share it with? They purposed out of their way to spend this week up here winning souls for God, right? Phenomenal. There's others, there's a group down at the Weirs that are just bringing people in and praying with them, right? They're giving out free coffee, praying with them. Everywhere they go. If God has so much that he wants you, he throws someone in front of you, are you willing to at least pray? It's not because you're a nice person or because you're special or because I just happen to have directions it, there's tons of places people could have stopped and asked for directions. God placed them right here for us to speak to. Because we're the ones they're either going to say no to or they're going to say yes to. God uses us in that way, mightily in his way to do this. Which are we going to follow? It's incredible any time that we want to. If we pay attention and walk in Christ, you will see what he wants us to do. And it's all about grace. It's 100% about grace, right? And the grace is the grace that I'm given for who I am, right? Where I came from. I shouldn't be allowed to get into heaven. I wasn't a good person. Yet through his grace and mercy, every single one of us have the opportunity. So if you see someone that you really think you should not, that's probably the person God wants you to pray with. That's the one that God wants you to give the mercy to because he's given it to you. The wretched man that I am, right? What a song, right? My chains are gone. I've been set free from being stuck with having to get the love of Where's Beach, right? Heaven. If I can get to Where's Beach, I'll be at heaven. Look at, they're coming from around the world to go get this glorious, right? How many of them, and if you look, you <coughs> see a couple of guys with crosses today, right? Not like mine, with crosses on their vests. How many of them are popping out Holly Davidson? How many Holly Davidson shirts do you have at home? How many in the name of Jesus do you have at home? How many hats do you have of Jesus at home? How many hats do you have of anything? other than Jesus at home, tons of them, right? We're logos, we'll walk around logos, and we'll walk around signs for Jesus. We're across for a while, see what happens. <laughs> it goes both ways. We've been in packs where they've tried to run us over and kill us, right, right up through the middle of our motorcycles. And then we've had other times where they're beeping and waving and hollering and they want to pray with us and we meet with people and it's just incredible. Am I willing to follow and walk what Christ asked me to walk, right? He gives us gifts, right? He gives us gifts to be able to follow him. When we're walking in the passion of the world, we are out of balance with God, right? So when I'm sitting out here and I'm lusting over these motorcycles and wanting to be down Weir's Beach, I am out of balance with God. Guess what? I don't feel like praying with people. I'm not in the mood. I'm out of balance. We're all out of balance. Today's world just keeps us out of balance. It's very hard to keep back into balance and just walk in the Lord's way, right? Because the world's offering and offering and offering, and I want, and I want, and I want, right? Anything you've got is junk if you bought it yesterday because it's outdated today. You have to get something new. So we live on, I want more, I gotta have better. It works, there's nothing wrong with it. 
Yeah, but the world told me that I need to know it. So I go get to know it. Of anything. Walk in the light of, of the cross because he's coming back. Right? That's what's important. Stay focused, right? Win souls. This life is just misery. There's an out. Let people see the out in you rather than you trying to jump back into their world. Right? Let them see that. Man, we got it made. Right? We can sit here and talk about Jesus. This place is you can't do that. Right? And we know just from right down the highway with a cross on our back that evil wants to get us. Right? Are you willing to put your life on the line for Christ? He did for you. Is your love grace loaded in humility? Or does it have attachments? Does your love have an attachment to it that doesn't have grace attached to it? Only if you do this, then I will love you. Do I stretch my love beyond my capabilities? Is it godly love? Because God loves me. I certainly shouldn't have been loved. God loves the people who did harm to me. Can I love them? Can I stretch my love to love them? He does. How can people see how great Christ's love is if I'm not humble enough to give someone that full love? How far do I go with that? How willing am I go with that? I'll go there, but I ain't going over there. Attachment. His grace has no attachment. Are you going to grow up? Did you see what they're doing? Have you heard what they're going to be doing? Do I grumble? I, you know, if they stop doing that, then they'd really be allowed into my life. Right? Man, I'm a problem. Do I walk in the gifts of God? Right? Romans 12, <laughs> verses 3 through 8. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned you. He's given me my measure of faith. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, through many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. We all stick together, we all work together, we're all working for the things that Christ wants us to do. Having gifts that differ, I can do things that other people can't, other people do things that I can't. According to the grace given to us. God's given us grace in the, in the gift that we have. Right? Let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith. Faith in service. In our serving that one who teaches is his teaching. The one who exhorts is exhaustion. The one who contributes is generosity. The one who leads with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. You can't be taught a gift. It's a gift. <coughs> if you try to teach people how to be merciful, and they don't get it through a gift, they're not going to be merciful. They're going to be stuck in the flesh trying to hurt someone somewhere, and probably themselves in the process. They're gifts. They're not given. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. It's like salvation. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. There's another set of gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12.4. Actually, we're going to start in verse 8. 
For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. Wisdom is a gift. It's not earned. It's not because you've been around for a long time. It's not because you're an elder. It's not because you're a pastor. It's not because you do good. It's not because you do bad. It's a gift from God. And to another utterance of knowledge. I'm smart. Listen. I don't have the right to even be able to be speaking. I've talked this many times for the injuries I had. How do I have the knowledge? I have none. God puts his words through my mouth. According to the same spirit to another faith. Some people got faith I wish I had. Man, that's their gift. By the same spirit to another gifts of healing. To the same spirit, to another the works of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. All these are employed by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. The Holy Spirit helps us with those as he wills. You can't teach someone tongues. It's a gift. You can't teach someone wisdom. It's a gift. Do you walk out there in the faith that what you're going to do is what God has given to you as a gift? Your ability to be placed in front of someone who needs your help isn't your, your ability. God put you there because he knows he's going to put the words in your mouth to answer the questions that people have. The freedom of not being under the thumb of somebody. Open your mouth, spread the gospel, and God will fill your mouth with the words. It just does. I don't know how I do it. It isn't because I'm smart. It isn't because I know this book. I have to go home and study this all the time. I don't have this written on my heart the way it should be. I know the story. That part is in my heart, but I can't get the words. I don't know how to get these words. But I know if I come here and I'm faithful to God to come here, he'll put them in my mouth. Because I have no ability to do this. I'm a drug addict from Saugus who likes to live in the gutter and chase motorcycles up and down the street and find heaven at Weir's Beach. That's who I am. I don't live that way because I have Christ in me and he's teaching me how not to. He's given me gifts to help others so that they don't have to follow in that path. He's given me the ability to speak to people and say, you don't have to go that way. And I walk that way as often as possible so they can see that this change isn't just words being pumped out of my mouth. I you. You're no different. If you can't get your children, your grandchildren, who can you get to see you what? Walk the walk. Anybody can talk it. Can we walk it? Can you share it? Can you stand firm that if someone stopped you in the street anywhere today, that you could teach them instantly salvation? Can't teach them. You get the gift of being able to express it that knowledge of how to get there. Do you want to fight with somebody? Do you want to pray with somebody? If I'm walking in the flesh, then I want to fight with somebody. If I'm walking in the flesh, then I don't feel like praying with anybody. If I'm walking in the flesh, all I'm thinking about is that new motorcycle. And the devil's going to have commercials on every 10 minutes of brand new motorcycles. Come on up, free ride, take, take a trip, do what you want, here you go. Oh, I can't wait. I can even make the payment, the same payment that I'm paying now on the bike that I got. Beautiful. Don't need it. Beautiful. I went to a guy with a broken radio. I went to a Holly dealer. My radio was broken. And he says, you know, we can get you on a brand new machine. Why well, get a radio? So I'm sitting there, and there's, it, he gets a phone call, and his refrigerator is broken. So he's done with the phone call. He's got to get a new refrigerator. He's got to be all fixed up, whatever he's going to do. I says, you know what? 
Don't worry about the refrigerator. Today I get you a brand new motorcycle. Yeah. All your worries will go away. And he said, you got me. Because that's his job. His job is the world to tell me that everything I got is junk. The people I hang around with are no good. And when I say I love you to somebody, they say, well, do you really? Because when I do, I say I do. Do I say I love you and then not walk in that path? It's easy to say I love you. It's hard to walk in I love you. It's hard to walk in forgiveness. It's hard to walk in grace. Right? Back to the same thing that I say all the time. First I want to slap them, then I want to pray with them. Hopefully I'll want to pray with them and never, never want to slap them. guys that want those bikes, but I really don't want what they have. I really want what I have. I just have the rest of it, but I always want more. Right? Go to Baltimore and hang out with all them guys and be with a thousand people just praising God. Man, I want that. And so I'm sitting here watching the motorcycles <coughs> and I'm with that crew. I was blessed to be able to sit on the stoop with Mark. And we talked about God, we talked about the world. We talked about the people who rejected Christ as we were sitting there. And how that's a setup from God to show us that that's where we gotta go. We can show them, it's up to them, right? <coughs> Walk in his mercy and grace and you'll be at peace, <coughs> right? I want some peace. I need some peace in my life. Well, mercy and grace gives it. If you give it, you get it. Right? If I'm so busy worrying about not giving grace to someone, I'm too busy worrying about how miserable my life is, so guess what? I'm walking around in misery. Right? If I'm questioning God, then I'm questioning life. I'm sitting around questioning. If I'm resting in God because I know what He wants me to do, I'm at peace. In any storm, in any storm, and he's offered us many storms to see that that situation proves true. So today as you go about it, you're going to be able to walk in grace. <coughs> Hopefully you can. Think of today, etch it on your heart, try to walk through today and share the gospel with someone. God's going to place someone in your path today. And it's not condemnation if you don't. Just keep your eyes open and see. See what you can do for God today, not what God can do for you. Kind of a statement I took from someone else. Cleaned it up a little bit. Amen? Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today, Lord. May I walk in your grace and your mercy and share that with as many people as I possibly can, Lord. And not fall into the world and the flesh that I like being in also. If there's anybody here today that hasn't received you and isn't one of your children, Lord, let today be the time and the moment to be able to do that quietly in their own heart. Just say the simple prayer. Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. Forgive me. Come in my heart and live. I want to know you. Lord, thank you for today. Dispatch your angels to hang out with us throughout the entire day. Lift us up. Bless us up. Give us your travel and mercies. And if there's anybody out here, invite me to just stop in. Please send them in. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Yeah.